uh, now we uh, we're going to hear about how how you can architect for uh, this uh, data management space by um, and we're going to hear from uh, from Janet Piao from from Talon. Uh, please welcome Janet. Hi everyone, nice to meet you. So I'm Janet from Talon. I'm the product marketing lead for APAC and we cover um, ASEAN, Australia, and New Zealand, as well as Japan in um, the APAC region. So today I'm sure you have heard a lot about APIs from the other speakers before me. So the value of API is really in that it facilitates a standardized way of organizing and sharing information with both external and internal stakeholders. So the speaker before me spoke about how her business had democratized data by providing self-service tools um, which supports the fusion of data into daily business activities and processes. So in my presentation, I would like to extend the discussion beyond a purely API review and show you what it takes, not just to standardize and share the data, but also to um, collect, govern, transform the data across the enterprise in supporting critical business decisions. Uh, Janet, so, sorry, are you able to share your screen? Sure, yeah. There you go. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes, we can see it now. Thanks. Okay, fantastic. Um, you have your camera on. Sorry? I'm not seeing, I'm not seeing your camera, but... Um, You're not seeing... That might be, I think it's okay. Yeah, sorry. You, you're still on. Okay. Um, Thank you. Everything's okay. Just continue. Okay. Is it okay now? Yes. Thanks. Okay. No problem. So let me just um, start my presentation. So do stop me anytime if you have any questions, you know. So today I also have my colleagues, Siddharth and Vivian here with me in this webinar. So Siddharth is actually our pieces consultant and Vivian is our ASEAN Field Marketing Manager. So we are all happy to take any questions during the, um, you know, any time during the webinar do, at the, using the side panel um, or during the Q&A session, all right? So let me quickly dive into um, what is happening in the data management landscape today. Right. So we know that the diversity of data is actually flourishing. So you have things like you know structured versus unstructured data types. So according to projections from, from IDC, 80% of the worldwide data will be unstructured by 2025. Okay. You have a lot more different type of databases now, like relation, relational, which is the traditional type and the non-relational such as MongoDB, whereby the latter type of database will continue to gain in popularity because um, of the growing relevance of graph database. You also have different type of deployment platforms, so such as the public cloud, private cloud, or a hybrid setup. And you have different data use cases, you know, for example, 360 view of customer products or you know, data warehouse migration. So all this increase in data diversity is leading to a much more complex data management setup. And the challenges include, you know, the integration aspect whereby the development of organizational silo data, um, whether if it is on a cloud or on-prem setup, you know, or even on a data lake spaces. So basically you can have actually multiple data lakes within the organization which are all silos. So the second aspect is really the technical challenge of finding data engineering resources. So um, in this Forrester report, um, there are actually 12 times as many unfulfilled data engineering jobs as the data scientist position. So a key data engineering difficulty is really with oper operationalizing, sustaining, as well as orchestrating the data pipeline across multiple execution environment. And the third challenge is really that of governance, because what is happening in the world today is really that we are observing a lot more regulatory oversight <clears throat> across you know, industry on data privacy and protection and how you can use the data. And you know, globally, you know, like for example, the, uh, the Europe region, you have the GDPA, um, you have you know, more specific financial requirements like the IFRS, in Singapore, you have the PDPA for consumer and also the PSGA for the public sector. So the last part is really ha having to do with user challenge. So as more stakeholders expect access to data, using it as part of the underlying analysis from planning to working um, on the management level, 
and across function within the organization, I think that that leads to um, you know a whole new different set of expectation depending on which um, uh, data user it is. All right. So, what does this mean? Um, basically, essentially, with this landscape, what we're seeing is data chaos. And what are the implications of data chaos for companies today? So, fragmentation is actually the first implication. So, the IT landscape in the organization is getting more and more fragmented with more data because that with more data comes more data location and sources. And according to IDG, the average company has 400 plus sources of data and you know more than six tools to manage it. And essentially in some of our larger customer, what we're observing is that they have up to like two digits number of data, which is not uncommon at all. And one of the underlying worry beyond practical concerns, you know, such as keeping track of the data sources and tool is really how can you ensure that your entire business is on the same page and you're relying on the same set of data to make critical business decision, which requires a lot of alignment between the LBs. So the second issue is really that with fragmentation comes data quality and data governance issues. When there are too many data silos, it's, it's really difficult to implement a common data quality and governance framework across board. So as a result of the lack of data quality, the data is less valuable than it can be. And we know that back data <clears throat> costs company on average 30% of their revenue. And more worrying, almost three quarter of data in an organization does not get used when they are not in view of IT, all right? And in relation, the third point being, with the lack of governance, shadow IT is really another concern because um, when each department run their own project and lead to multiple tools, there is a overall slowing down of the organization's responsiveness. So as such, some of the business unit might get tired of waiting for IT to help and end up getting their own unauthorized solutions. And I think more importantly, when projects run in a vacuum and don't build capabilities on top of each other for the organization, um, you basically cannot make agile organizational changes because you will need to like update, say, maybe 20 plus different tools before you can leverage on the data. So shadow IT is estimated to cost like, you know, close to three, two trillion dollars every year. All right. And the last part is really, it is difficult for organizations to keep up with the accelerating change of data, sorry, of technology. So it is much more difficult to move your data to the cloud and take advantage of the latest analytics platform if you are beholden to a legacy data management solution that is difficult to migrate from an on-prem setup. <clears throat> so that is why we observe that nearly half of digital transformation fails and only 10% ends up exceeding expectations. Thus, while a vast majority of organizations recognize the value of investing in their data and getting value from it, only 30, which is less than a third, are able to do this effectively. Now, <clears throat> let's move on. So in order to leverage their company's data asset to achieve data transformation initiative, most companies IT understand that there's a need to democratize data. And they use API to actually deliver the requested data in a standardized and real-time format to different business LOBs, or usually either the analytics or the operational-based departments. So to take a closer look into what usually happens in companies that embark on this API journey, so on the analytics path of the, this value chain at the top. So as data is refined into information and then into digital intelligence, such as insights or predictions, we, we see here that um, API is really a very key enabling technology to connect these use cases in real time and being leveraged for reporting, decision making, you know, data science or even artificial intelligence deployment. And the API connectivity is at every step of the way. And some of it is already built in today in the organization while others need to be created. <clears throat> at the bottom on the operational path, so data is actually fueling the core business in this scenario and existing business processes supports and deliver the digital interaction and experience that serves not only customers, but also partners and employees. Therefore, the API is actually a critical 
building block to synchronize and compose the data into high value real time, as well as providing a consistent digital services across the different channels of interaction, such as mobile, web, or even you know, IoT connected devices, and even partner APIs, so that it facilitates self-service business development. So finally, API bridges both the analytics and the operational use case together because it enables the reuse of master data in application, as well as augment the customer experience in real time. So for example, a product purchase recommendation algorithm that's produced by our data science team, which is executing in real time as a customer fills up his shopping cart on the online website. So as we can see, APIs are everywhere. They basically help to connect the digital value chain and they are gaining in popularity as technologies such as microservices lead to refactoring of application into ever smaller and smaller reusable blocks of API. So ultimately, as an organization, there is a need for an industry approach to API delivery and governance within the IT organization. Okay, so I'm not going to talk too much about this in view of time, but I guess, you know, these are some of the key um, benefits of API, you know, which essentially has to do with, you know, making sure that teams can work in parallel because, you know, when an API contract is created between services, so different teams within the organization can work on multiple APIs at the same time, okay? And API is also a way of reducing development costs when, um, you know, uh, application building is not start from scratch, okay? Because you, you already have API patterns that you can reuse, as well as um, a third point on reducing the speed to market because essentially the process of building API can be automated that allows, can be automated using tools that allows the import of API definition files. So, with such API tools, right? Any API documentation, SDKs, or mock API can be auto-generated, and that significantly speed up the development of API and application. And essentially, a API service, a API first approach makes it possible to add new services and technology to applications quickly without having to re-architect the entire system. And I guess one of the most important benefits of API is that it reduces a developer's learning cycle because, you know, in any well-designed, well-documented, consistent API helps to shorten the learning curve, you know, for the developer. So the increase in the efficiency of the IT team from API implementation ultimately really translate into enabling the company and making their data more accessible across the organization. So well, the question now is, is API sufficient by itself in managing data? Okay. The, the reality is that despite API first approach, the API implementation is really very much at the end of the iceberg or the end of the data value chain, so as to speak, in reality. And IT is often tasked with multiple use cases which has varying data requirements and dimension, whereby the expectation of data is different from stakeholders to stakeholders. So some of the examples of the use case from the respective stakeholders can be seen here. So for example, a compliance project will require more governance element, such as lineage tracking and data protection, compared to a IoT project, which requires data to be real time with low latency, specific requirement, as well as be able to process massive amount of data at the edge of the network. So every different use case will trigger a different but interrelated data management dimension or requirement which IT has to support. So the question now is, so we understand that there are different stakeholder expectations, all right? So how do we um, look at it in a more concrete way? So this is where I would like to essentially uh, bring in a use case, okay? So the next few slides are actually built based on a customer 360 use case. Um, Essentially, you have three different groups of stakeholders here, IT, marketing, or the line of business, as well as the legal or the DPO. And they all have different expectations on how the data will be used. And I think more importantly, the characteristics of the data that needs to be delivered. So everyone has different expectations on the speed and the integrity of the data. I'm not going to go through um, the, the, the pointers here. I think you can take a quick look. So I think the question here is that, 
other than making API, data accessible via API, we need to make data compliant and clean as well for a more complete decision making when it comes to critical business decision, which is often a function of multiple stakeholders within the organization itself. All right. So now the question is, what else do we need to achieve that accessible, clean and compliant data? Like I mentioned previously, API services is really very much at the end of the data value chain. And we still have three more stages, you know, at the front of the data life cycle, which um, we need to look into. So in this scenario, which is a, a 360 customer profile, also known as data hub technically to some, okay? The first step in terms of collection is really all about data capture, ingestion and integration. That can be real time or batch or otherwise, okay? Which is the fundamental steps to before you can use any data within the organization. However, in addition, you have other steps such as, you know, discovering the data, using profiling and pattern recognition with inbuilt AI and ML algorithm, which enable the documentation and categorization of data automatically and efficiently. Okay, these are also key dimensions that, you know, any um, data IT team needs to look at. So an, an initial assessment of data quality can also be made at this stage using trust metrics or indicators such as a trust score, which is a really important dimension at this phase. Because essentially it tells you like, you know, how, how good your, your data is and whether you need further steps to really transform it and make it suitable and trustable for use. So as we move on to the governed phase, okay, essentially this is where we take control of the data and create a place where all your data asset is documented. So here, data actually needs to be certified, protected with data ownership and applied to the data. Sorry, data quality policies needs to be um, collaboratively defined and applied to the data. So for example, whether if as a team, you might want to mask certain PII fields from the rest of the organizations, all right? So this is also where a data controller can actually track and trace all data flow within the organization with a end-to-end -end lineage that speaks, you know, the origin and destination of the data. And moving on, the third stage, which is the transformation stage, is where then we can create the golden record for reconcili reconciliating and cross-referencing of all the data using transformation processor, for example, you know, matching or survivorship rules, which can be set, okay? And all this golden record can then be stored in a database where AI or ML power and analytics actually be used to further enrich the data. And finally, coming back to API, now, you know, the clean, the, the compliant and trustable data can now be shared with the data consumer via a on-prem setup or a data as a service cloud setup. You know, if the data consumers are human, they might use search-based application or self-service tools to consume their data. If the end consumer of the data is an algorithm or application, then the interfacing of the data will be via APIs, all right? So here, the data lifecycle, which I've just described, you know, using the use case of the customer 360, is really supported by the latest data management view, which both Gartner and Forrester have off the market. So Gartner recently identified Data Fabric as one of the top 10 data and analytics technology trend for 2019, which helps in addressing this data management challenges. And when we really look at, you know, data fabric, when we distill down the data fabric into the four key tenets, right, which is common across whether it's Gartner or Forrester's definition. First of all, a, a data fabric is actually a framework. It is not a technology. It is a framework that comprises of different architectures and technologies. Second, it is a data pattern which is automated, reusable and augmented. Sorry, I should say it, it enables data patterns, okay, to be automated, reused, and augmented. And the third is really that there is, it is data is governed and secure, and essentially um, that is across disparate data and technologies within the fabric. And lastly, a data fabric supports strategic outcomes with faster and governed self-service access. Okay, and more importantly, a data fabric provides a way of addressing different stakeholders' pains and needs when it comes to data management. So to give you some example, 
for data architect and engineers, data chaos means that they have to deal with silo des disparate data sources. And the pain is really in learning how to use all the multiple tools and you know, doing manual hand coding and stitching the data together, which leads to wasted time and resources. So Data Fabric actually has the capability to connect to different data applications, irrespective of the underlying coding that's used. And this cut down a lot on the technical training and development time drastically and optimizes the IT resources as well. And for people like the CIO, CTO, data chaos actually means managing too many one-off projects. So all these one-off projects are really quick to deploy. However, it slows down the overall company's responsiveness to critical business decision and prevents agility. So Data Fabric is a platform that's meant to address data needs on a centralized basis and accelerate the time to market when different data capabilities demanded by Different use cases can be caught for in a single platform depending on the business use case. And lastly, for compliance officer, data, fab, data chaos means that um, you know, organizations are limited in their ability to trace data lineage and access as well as ensure legal compliance. So the data fabric ensures that data protection techniques such as masking or lineage capabilities are present across the different data sources and provide accountability at the end of the day. And uh, this is where I stop. Thank you so much for your attention. If you'd like to understand more about how a data fabric works, please visit us at our virtual booth to find out more or reach out to our website. And um, so now I think we have some time for Q&A. So any questions? Thank you. Thanks very much, Jenna. Uh, I think we all understand the, um, the data life cycle much better now. Uh, sorry, I'm giving, I must be giving a lot of feedback. So, um, yes, as Janet mentioned, we have a couple of minutes for questions. You can type them into the chat here. Uh, I'm afraid. So we actually have some, you know, uh, case studies of how, you know, our customers, like for example, AstraZeneca, um, users and leverages data fabric across different functions within the business. You know, um, I would encourage everybody who is interested to know more to really visit our website or, you know, just ping us um, and we can send over the document to you. Okay, thanks. Thanks very much, Jenna. Thank um, you. We